And now we come to the first prize, which has the privilege to be presented at our session. The winner is Irene Avagnina. She works in Padua. And really, I was very impressed when I read this abstract because it's a quite a novel approach in pediatric palliative care. To my knowledge, it's the first time that this approach is, is uh, presented. And the title is Sports in Pediatric Palliative Care. Not just cycling, sports in general. And I think uh, it will be interesting to hear the presenter of this prize. Okay? Irene, the stage is yours. Thank you. Okay, so um, first of all, I want to uh, tell to everybody that has support, um, this study is the result of a teamwork uh, made by all the staff or have of our hospice and mostly of by her patients and their family that always uh, are super enthusiastic to work with us and to share with others their experience and their um, energy that they put every day to uh, defend their rights. So um, today we talk about sports in pediatric palliative care. Um, why we are talking about sports Actually, we talk about sports because uh, Global Guidelines recommends integration of sports activity for people with disabilities. But if we go through a uh, data source, uh, actually there is a lack of evidence in literature on the integration of sports in people, uh, in children with, in pediatric palliative care. So our aim was to conduce a pilot study to describe the um, sport experience of children followed by our centers. Um, this study was conduced in March 2020, and a previous uh, survey was made to identify those children that were playing sports in our center, and all of these children were included in the study. Follow then, an online uh, ad hoc questionnaire was sent to children uh, and to their caregivers, and inside, physicians, uh, uh, psychologists, physiatrics, and physiotherapists fulfill the ECF scale, the body functioning and the activity and the participation to have a better access of global functional competence of this child. So what emerged is that at that time, uh, 177 children were followed by our centers, but only 17 children were actually practicing sports. So it's a small percentage of them. And who are these children? But we noticed that the median age was 12, with a range between six years and 18. So actually scholar age is those that actually practice sports. Another interesting aspect was that uh, the, these 17 children, they mostly have neuromuscular disease or myopathy, while other kind of disease were not represented actually in this group. Physical disability was the major problem of the children that were practicing sport, while actually only one child has both cognitive and physical uh, disability, and one visual and physical. And finally, uh, describing this population, we can see that the medical needs are, were actually high, with 10 children needing nocturnal ventilations, two having tracheostomy and nocturnal ventilations, and five having enteral nutrition. Um, using the ECF scale, which uh, we used to uh, have a more um, standardized way to describe our populations, we can see that 88% had motor disability. Of those, 66% do not walk, but of this group, 94% was able to move around with electronic devices. So it confirms also that 95% have normal or mild in cognitive impairment and that 82% was actually able, normally able to interact with other people. So also this scale um, represents what we saw by describing this our population, saying that 
um, physical disability was uh, important, while on the other side, cognitive status was actually normal. And how does sport get into the life of these children and families? Um, all these children practicing sports were attending schools, and 88% undergo physiotherapy, which was interesting because sports is not an alternative to physiotherapy and rehabilitation. Another interesting data was that um, actually the uh, financial level of the family was not that high. 82% have low or moderate financial status, so sports is not only for rich families, which was also interesting to see. Another question that we uh, asked to parents was, um, how did you decide to start practicing sports? And actually, the idea came mostly from parents and children. Just one healthcare provider suggests to the family to start practicing sports. And when deciding what was, uh, or looking after for what was ability, uh, available in their area, Actually, um, they discover the opportunity to play sports by other parents, associations, or directly to a sports club or other places. So in other times, healthcare providers were not involved in identifying where to practice sports. Most practice sports is swimming or uh, and apnea, followed by baskin, horse riding, and hockey. Normally, the three children that played more than one sport are those that played swimming plus another one. Um, interesting was to see that 82% actually were mixed group of adult and uh, children, and also mix, uh, sex mixed group, so female and male all together. And 76% were actually exclusively groups of people with disability, different kind of disability, but all with disability. Another interesting aspect is that 100% of caregivers were those who assist and accompany their child to sport. So actually, is, everything is on the caregiver. But now I want to give a word to our patients and their family. So I'm reporting what actually they answer to our questions. So when describing their personal experience for children and young adults, sport is fun. Sports is a way to uh, learn to do things on their own. It's a way to make friends, to get integrated. And the interesting aspects was being just with people with disability was not actually a real limit for these children. And they didn't feel that sport was interfering with the rest of their life and mostly, actually none of them were scared about getting sick or hurt while playing sports. Another interesting answer was that when asking if they had, were scared about not being able to play sports anymore, the majority said no, even if they were conscious about the possibility of the worsening of their disease, but they were trusted that they could find solution to keep on playing sports. Parents also uh, reported that sports represented also for them a possibility to, to implement their social life. So it has a positive role effect also on caregivers and that for them rescheduling their life to allow their child to play sport was not a limit. Also parents saw on their child the positive effect on sports, in socializations, in achieving goals, in autonomy and self-esteem. So also for them, sports represented an important uh, possibility for their child. When asking caregiver, what do you think it's a facilitator factor to allow your child to play sports? Actually, the first important thing is to have structures. So architectonical barriers, as we see after, it's the main problem to give access to sport in people with disability. Another facilitator factor was the uh, technical um, competence of providers. So obviously they should be trained about um, being coach of a, a team made by with children and adolescents. And another aspect was the information. So actually it's not really easy always to really um, understand what is really available in your area. So um, this aspect was important for the family to get actually access to uh, sports. 
Barriers, as, as I said before, architectonical barriers are the main limits, followed by cultural barriers. Still, we don't think that sports could be an option for people with disability. Um, equipment, which is expensive, so obviously the economical factor. While logistic, for example, is not important, these um, caregivers normally are those who accompany their child to um, rehabilitation, school, and others, so for them, this was not the main limit. When uh, we ask the children, what do you like the most about practicing sports? The two uh, things were uh, being with others and feeling free. I'm reporting here some phrases from this child, and one that I love the most is, um, I have fun and I go high speed without being called back. So it's also a possibility to be a rebel and to <laughs> don't do what you are meant to do. And for parents also, uh, sports make them feel happy and proud for their child. And another parent told us, uh, that he was feeling equal to other parents of normal child. So this was really strong to, to hear. When asking what would you say to another child or family that wants to start playing sports, more than 50% of parents and child directly told us, just do it, encourage people to do it. Um, children were saying that the green ones are the children and the orange are the parents. And so children were enthusiastic. They, they say that sports can give them the opportunity to clear their mind from thoughts and problems. Um, another aspect that came across was the possibility to uh, cross limits. So both for children and parents, the opportunity to do sports is a way to demonstrate that disability is not a limitation, that we can try it. One parent told that Every, not every, we have to find a way to do things, and if there is no way, we can invent it. So we have, our role is to create solutions to these problems and to include them. And obviously one, I'd say that sports change their life, so this is a strong <laughs> point. So um, in conclusion, what could we say? We can say that sport in our research uh, was associated with a positive experience of integration and fun for children, that also for caregiver, it was a positive experience, although it uh, required them an um, important commitment. Um, negative aspects is that <laughs> negative uh, is a sp small population, so <laughs> obviously we cannot do uh, general consideration, but in, in our study we see that sports now it's limited to children with physical disability or it's more accessible to this kind of children. And another aspect that I will say is that um, we didn't saw uh, um, the healthcare provider's role in promoting sports in this population. So actually it was something that came from parents and children directly. So I think that what we have to bring home is that caregivers and healthcare providers should be aware of the importance of sports and they have to support their children's desire to practice it. For us, um, as palliativists, um, our, one of our goal is to support children and their family in their social life. And so I think that we also have to start supporting them in promoting sports and supporting the children, the family, and peers for this inclusion of children in palliative care in sports. And finally, um, as we saw these results, and considering the lack of evidence we have in literature, I hope that this is a beginning to uh, promote further research on the topic. Um, COVID was not helpful because we started the study exactly when the COVID started, so <laughs> sport then was blocked, but now everything came back, so it's time to do it. And, okay, this is <laughs> our last message, <laughs> so thank you. Thank you.